Brother Steve, could you raise the screen, please? So we can enjoy the cross behind us. morning. We have a topic I believe that we are all very, very familiar with. Uh, the insert is in your bulletin so you can follow along and hopefully review it through this coming week. Um, all the scripture verses that I'll be referring to are there in the insert. Um, and some of the questions that challenge us this morning are there, or actually all of the questions that I'll be using to challenge us with are there. And I pray that the questions will be listened to, and that the answers will be resolved today, that uh, as we put before you a question, that, we'll, that we will answer it through God's Word. Amen. Have any of you tried having a nice garden? Have any of you tried having a nice landscape? What do you notice in that? Once you begin, the weeds begin as well. Somehow or another, they know what you're doing, and they track your house down, and they start uh, growing. Is that correct? <laughs> I think it's just part of life. That's the existence. It's not that they have a mean spirit. It's not that they have, uh, you know, any kind of uh, uh, target on you. The weeds, the plants, they'll grow. And that's just part of this life that we have to maintain them. And who knows? Maybe the weeds are part of this fallen world. Because I doubt that we'll see any kind of weeds in heaven. Praise God. Heaven will be a beautiful place without any kind of a weed. Amen. But for what I stated here this morning, there's symbolism to be had in that. In life, as you work every day, as you make all effort to bless your family, to bless your spouse, to bless your children, weeds of life flourish. All over, all around you. Whether they are in your neighborhood, your family, your community, or in, in other countries. When you look on the news, every day there's another, another problem somewhere. And we see problems always constantly popping up. And we see challenges continually pop, popping up. So these are the weeds of life. The weeds of life. Okay? And so to have a good life, we need to continually maintain the weeds, get them out of our life, right? Not let them grow, not let them take over our life, our, our marriages, our children, uh, and so on. So that leads us to the topic this morning, the topic of worry. Worry is a monster, or it could grow into a monster. Worry is a weed, and it could take over your life. And we've talked about worry before, I'm sure of it. And the reason why we talk about it again, it is worthy to review a topic that we are always challenged with. Worry is one of these topics. As you go back to work on Monday, as you go back to the grind on Monday, these different things will pop up again. And so you might take your eyes off the Lord as you're maintaining and trying to take care of these weeds. But we want to keep your eyes focused on the Lord as you're maintaining your life. There's a difference here. You can make all the effort by yourself. But this morning, I want to teach you, I want to show you biblically, that as you're trying to get worry out of your life, it is through Jesus that you'll have success. Amen. So let's begin with Matthew chapter 6, 25 through 34, and you're welcome to turn there now, or you're welcome to uh, look it up uh, this week, but at least the scripture passage is posted there for you. I'm going to read it for you. Uh, in Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34, 
What we find are instructions, teachings, a command by Jesus to us, to the people at that time, to the people before us, to the people of our generation, and the people in Jesus' name that will come after us. A teaching of, do not worry. Do not worry. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap, or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Now, when we get a teaching like this from Jesus, we might maybe not verbalize it, but maybe in our heart, in our mind, we might say, but Lord, I'm just trying to be responsible. Lord, I'm just trying to take care of the bills. Lord, I'm trying to take care of my kids. Lord, I'm trying to, you know, take care of all these situations that are in my life. Jesus knows what you need. And he stated there, your heavenly Father knows what you need. And he's going to provide for you. But he said, put first what is priority. And that's living for the Lord. And then he said, everything else will be taken care of. If you do what's right, if you do what's good, in the eyes of God, everything else will follow the right way. But if you are not doing good in what's in the eyes of the Lord, then everything else will crumble afterwards. So worrying is not being responsible. We think by worrying about our children, our jobs, the bills, or what we're going to eat, what we're going to wear, we think that's being responsible. I'm being responsible. I'm taking care of my family. I appreciate that. I appreciate your desire. And the Lord does too. But he gives us a teaching to show us there's a difference. Worrying is not being responsible. Here's what the teaching is. We turn to Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, Jesus gives us another teaching to show us he understands what you're going through. And that there's a difference between worrying and being responsible. Okay? And here's what the Word of God says. I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. The Lord's people are the sheep. The Lord's people are not the aggressive people. The Lord's people are the calm, the peaceful people. And then the Word of God continues, Therefore, be shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. What does this mean? Okay. That you are in a challenging world. You are in a difficult world. 
You are in a world of people who are godless. And they will try to eat you up. They, they will try to devour you. So you are not called to be naive. You are called to be intelligent. You are called to be aware. You are called to be shrewd. Not sinful, shrewd. Mean wise. But at the same time, standing for your rights, at the same time, doing the right thing, at the same time, being vocal, at the same time, being clever, at the same time, being intelligent, the Word of God says, be innocent as doves. You can live right and live smart and still remain righteous. But you are not called to worry. I am not called to worry. Now, is there one person or one occupation or one kind of uh, gender that worries? No. I believe in any occupation you have, there's, there's worrying that wants to seep in. in. For men or for women, you can worry. Worrying is something that attacks, that grows in everyone's garden. It's something that we have to maintain, not allow it to take over. So what is worry? That's the next question for you. What is this worry? What is this monster that wants to come into my life and, and take away my blessings, take away my peace? What is this? Well, here's how we want to understand it. Praise God, we had a wonderful Bible study. Sorry, we had another, we had a wonderful Defending the Christian Faith last Sunday, we talked about this. And I, I thought it was such a blessing for us at that time. That I needed to present it this morning. And so now I ask you, what is worry? I'm going to, ans I'm going to answer that by showing you this. What is love? So when I asked you what is love, what would you say? You might give a definition of uh, what the Webster's Dictionary says. You might say what your feelings are. Or you might be wise and say, you know what? 1 Corinthians chapter 13 gives me the definition of love. Yes, it does. Amen. The Word of God. God has given us what love is. You guys remember what love is? Love is patient. Love is kind. It doesn't envy. It doesn't boast. It doesn't keep a record of wrong. It always trusts. Always hopes always perseveres, and on and on, right? A four-letter word is so great, like an ocean, so deep, so wonderful. Love is so mighty and so great. Did you know that worry isn't the root? See, love is the root, and all these wonderful blessings come from love. Worry is a fruit from something else. Do you know it's a, a fruit of fear? Worry is a fruit of fear. When you are afraid that this might happen, this might happen, that might happen, oh, I didn't think about that, oof. <laughs> but when you're, when you're afraid, you worry. Worry is a fruit of fear. Let's now look at this. Along with worry, what else is a fruit of fear? There is stress. There is tension. There is doubt. Arguing. Hatred. Distrust. Do you know all this comes from fear? Fear is the root of all these things that can destroy your life. Now, if fear is the root, so that's what we have to target. We have to target not the leaves, we have to target the root and get that out of our life, right? Good. So, 
The question now before you is, whose fault is it that I have fear in my life? Did God make me to be afraid? Did God put fear in my heart? Now, it does say fear the Lord, but you know what? We misunderstand that. We need to revere God. That's the difference. We aren't scared of God. We love God, and we respect His authority, and we know that He is mighty, and that He, in His hands, is my body and my soul. He is the judge, and He is the Savior. So, let's see what God has made in us. Did God make fear in us? Let's look at 2 Timothy 1, 7. Because I want to find out who's responsible for fear that comes and targets me. That fear, this fear that keeps coming, trying to pop up in my life. When I look at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, what will I find? I find this verse. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, shyness. Uh, I want to cringe. God hasn't done that. The Word of God states very clearly, God has not given us a spirit of fear and of timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. Amen. Amen. What is God responsible? When you are His, and you submit to Him, what does He build in your life? He doesn't put fear in your life. He takes it out. He doesn't put worry in your life. He takes it out if you let Him. He doesn't put tension in your life. He takes it out if you let Him. What is God responsible for when you allow Him to be King and Master of your life? That He builds you this way. To be a person that's powerful, mighty. A leader. That's what that means. A leader. He builds you to be a leader. He puts love in your life. In the life of self-control. Holiness. That's what that is. Self-discipline. Self-control. That's holiness. Amen. So, if God isn't responsible for, for this fear in my life, then who is? Did you know that you are responsible for this fear in your life? How am I responsible for putting this fear in my life? When you make the choice to disconnect yourself from God, you have made the choice for bringing fear in your life. How am I responsible? By disconnecting yourself from God. How can you disconnect yourself from God? By staying out of fellowship with other believers? Staying far from church? Staying, far, staying keeping your Bible closed? Staying far from having daily devotions? Staying far from being quiet and sitting before the Lord and listening and putting your burdens before Him. Let's look at Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Please. And uh, I put that for you there. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, on the insert there, it's listed, uh, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Okay. When you're weary, when you're burdened, what is that from? From stress? From tension? From the possibilities that you're afraid of that can happen? What makes you weary and burdened? Fear. Fear. So when you are disconnected from the Lord, when you don't have fellowship with Him, when you're ta trying to take care of your own life because you're your Savior, you are your own Savior, you will then find yourself to be defeated. You will find yourself that you can't carry the weight of the world and that you will be burdened. You'll have tension. 
You'll be afraid. Did you know a pastor can't save the world? <laughs> Did you know a pastor can't save you? You know who the past, what the pastor does? The pastor directs you to the one who can save you. I can't save myself. I know who can save me, who has saved me. It's Jesus. But you know what a pastor constantly has to do? Remember that the weeds that keep popping up, I can't take care of them. The Lord is the one who takes care of them. If I put this burden, if I burn myself out, if I weary myself, I can work. Look at your own yards. Look at your own gardens. You are weary from how many times those weeds pop up. You could be out there every day and those weeds keep popping up. That would be a full-time job if you, get, if you couldn't get paid for it. But you know what? The Lord has invited you. Don't be tense. Don't be worried. Don't be afraid. Go to Him. Matthew 11.28 Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. It is your choice to be afraid, to be worried, to be tense, to be defeated. Or it is your choice to have love in your life, to have self-discipline, to have power. In closing, Matthew 6, 24. I want to remind you of what we just read. Matthew 6, excuse me, Matthew 6, verse 34. I wrote down 24, but it's Matthew 6, 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Let me show you a, a great example of how worry or problems or fear can pop up. Sister Mary, you mentioned someone this morning who is looking at being totally blind within six to eight months. Who is this person? Donna Houston, she's a friend of mine. Donnie Houston. Donna. Donna Houston, I'm sorry. Donna Houston. 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 Donnie Houston. We're going to be praying for her. And we're going to be putting her before the Lord. And in Jesus' name, what is happening in her sight, we pray that the Lord will be the one that will cure her of this. Now, I mention this person why. I love my sight. In Jesus' name, nothing will ever happen to my sight. That's the one sense I don't ever want to lose. And I pray in Jesus' name, I will always have it. When I heard this news of this person, my human side just, oh, like it made, made me feel horrible for this person. Fear. Do you see? You could be walking a path that's far from fear, but news comes your way. The enemy is happy to bring this kind of news to your life. If you keep looking ahead of what possibly could occur, you will always be afraid. If you keep looking ahead, I'll be sick one day. This might happen to me. This might happen to me. What did Jesus say in Matthew 6, 34? Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow my friends. This might never happen to her. I know people that when they were young, they thought this is going to happen to them. It never happened to them. But their whole life, they've been living in fear. This is going to happen to me one day. The Lord Jesus is telling you, be free from this. 
not worry about tomorrow. You know what? Tomorrow might bring bad news. But today is the day you have. Tomorrow might never come. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Take care of today. Do the best you can today. Be a Christian today. Don't worry about being a Christian tomorrow, because you know what's going to happen? You're not going to be a Christian today. You want to be a Christian tomorrow. No. Live for Jesus today. Give your life today. Give your heart, your mind, your soul today to your Savior. You might not have tomorrow. And the fears that are coming tomorrow, you're afraid of nothing. Now, I promise you, I'm not preaching to you, I'm preaching to myself. God is preaching to all of us. I remind myself every day of what God has told me, so that way I will not be defeated. Every human being is victim, or could be a victim, to these things. But Jesus has given us the victory if we're willing to let him come into our life and, and, and submit to his teachings. And lastly, uh, 1 John 4.18. 1 John 4.18. This is a beautiful verse. I want you to remember it. All of God's word is beautiful, actually. Every single word, every single verse. And in this passage, we see how fear does not belong to a Christian if you're connected to your Savior. There is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Okay. What does that mean? There is no fear in love. If you love your Savior, you will be freed of fear. If you're disconnected from your Savior, then you're really not loving your Savior, so fear will come into your life. You see the difference? When you're connected to your Savior and know your Savior, have fellowship with your Savior, you'll love your Savior. And in that, fear won't be in your life. But if you're disconnected, you won't have a love for Him. And then fear has the opening to get in. I'm going to leave you with two tools to bless your life with. These two tools, I think I've been preaching from the pulpit since the, since the day I got here. And these are the two tools I know are the only tools for the believer that are really the essential tools to have. And it is this. Listen carefully. Are you listening? Every one of you, are you listening? Tool number one. Read your Bible every day. That allows you to be connected to the Word of God, to His Word, to His promise, to His words of victory for your life. Read God's Word every day. You know what you're going to find when you sit down and make the time, make the appointment to read God's Word? Peace. You won't find fear. You won't find tension. You won't find worry in that time when you're with the Lord. You won't find doubt. You won't find all this kind of craziness that you're constantly bombarded with. When you sit down and make an appointment with God to read His Word, you know what you're going to find? Love. Peace. My problems are solved. But every day you have to do that. Because every day more weeds pop up. Every day you have to go back to the Lord, I tell you. And the other thing is this. As you read, you want to fellowship with the Lord. Meaning what? You need to make time to pray. And what's praying? It's fellowshipping with God. You talk and you listen. Because He will talk. 
He will speak to your heart. He will speak through His Word. But if you don't pray, and you don't read, you will be disconnected. And fear, worry, tension, will have you as a toy. I pray that this will bless your life. I pray that these teachings will empower you. Because the Lord wants you to be empowered. He does not want you to be defeated. He wants you to have an abundant life.